Let's go down to Melbourne now and catch up with a man who used to head ASIO, used to head the, the Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, the Defence Department, and also he was our ambassador in Washington. Dennis Richardson joins us again. Good to talk to you, Dennis. Oh, hi there, Chris. It's want, great to be here. I wanted to get you on, on, on two key issues, firstly, and they both relate to China. First up... Well, I think one of them relates to China. First up, I wanted to talk about the Prime Minister's uh, warnings about cyber attacks uh, last week. We all presume he's talking uh, about China. Do you presume he's talking about China as the uh, state actor here? And if so, I, what do you think China would uh, strategic aim here would be? Well, first of all, I think he was talking about China. Secondly, I think he was very sensible not to mention China by name. Um, in terms of China's strategic interests in us, uh, that's, that's fairly simple. Uh, we are a close ally of the US. Uh, we are very strong, and properly so, in the enunciation of our own interests. We call China out uh, on, on foreign interference. They didn't like that because it echoed globally, uh, so they do uh, have an interest in some mischief here. Just two points on that. Firstly, why would the government not want to name China? Well, uh, there's, no, uh, there's no national interest served by calling a specific country out uh, when everyone is able to make uh, an educated guess. There's no need to. All right. Now, secondly, uh, you talk about why, of course, China would be interested in Australia, but what would be the aim of these cyber attacks? Are some of them uh, uh, aimed at just doing damage to certain organisations or are most of them looking at trying to suck out information, actually retrieve information from our communication systems? Well, uh, some of it is certainly an attempt uh, to break into government systems. The interest there is fairly self-evident. Uh, in the business arena... It's to gain advantage, uh, whether it be in negotiations or whether it be in intellectual property theft. And also, uh, the Chinese do have uh, very big uh, cyber operations, so they do tend to take a vacuum cleaner approach. And how proactive is Australia in the, the cyber attack and cyber defence area? Well, uh, you've only got to read uh, the public mission statement on the Australian Signals Directorate's website, uh, which states uh, that the mission is to, uh, is to um, reveal their secrets and protect our own. The theirs being whoever we go after. Yeah, it's, it's pretty obvious, but uh, some people seem to think it's all one way, I would have thought. Now, I want to ask you about uh, the politicians and the China relationship. Uh, and before I do that, I'll show you a little bit of what uh, Andrew Hastie said on this program the other day. I know you were watching, but I'll just re refresh your uh, uh, viewers' memories. This is what Andrew Hastie had to say about criticisms from Dennis Richardson and also Alan Gingell, the former head of the, uh, op the Office of National Assessments. These are foreign policy elites who've set the agenda for the last 15 or 20 years and they failed to appreciate the implications of an authoritarian China and an expansionist China and now they don't want backbenchers having a view on this, indeed mainstream Australians. So um, you just have to look at their record, um, Chris, and uh, I think it becomes pretty clear that they're pushing an angle of their own. There we go, Andrew Hastie reacting to criticism, uh, some strong criticism from Alan Gingell. I would have thought more mild criticism from you, Dennis Richardson. You were quoted as saying that this group called the Wolverines, a bipartisan group of Australian politicians, backbenchers, worried about uh, Australian sovereignty and, uh, and, and uh, the pushes from China. You were saying that doesn't add anything to our bilateral relationship. Yeah, uh, Chris, look, um, uh, what... Mr Hastie said the other night was really standard sloganeering. You had all the cliches, elites versus mainstream. You had uh, youth versus age. Uh, you had the attempt to wrap himself in the flag, uh, talk about himself as a supporter of Australian sovereignty, implying that those who have a different view don't, don't do that. In terms of 
Uh, it's, it's very kind of Mr Hasty to think that Alan and I have been uh, running Australian foreign policy <laughs> for the last 15, 20 years. Uh, we were both public servants at different point over that time. I imagine that's really, he's using me as a straw man to attack the Howard government, the Rudd government, the Gillard government, the Abbott government and the Turnbull governments because I worked for all of them. The fact is the relationship with China has changed. Uh, the policy approaches the Australian government rightly had uh, between 2000 and 2010 are no longer applicable today. China has changed. Uh, we have a different debate now and that's a very important debate. The substance of that debate is right. This is where we're at with China. Where do we go now? Do we put the relationship in the freezer for the next few years and forget about it? Uh, do, are there areas where we can sensibly, um, sensibly engage with China and what might those be? Or do we take an outright hostile approach to China? That's the substance of the issue. And it concerns me, as it should a lot of people, that the chair of the Intelligence and Security Committee takes it upon himself to effectively imply that those who disagree with him are not loyal Australians. Uh, I do know Mr Hasty as chairman of that committee. He's a very effective chairman and he's a highly respected chair of that committee. But I think the chair of that committee does have certain responsibilities and I don't think it, I don't think it does anyone any credit when we start to accuse each other of not being loyal Australians. We're all loyal Australians. And, the, uh, and what some elements of the media do in going after individuals, for instance, the Daily Telegraph the other day, in its uh, banner headline, Beijing's Beastie, uh, and uh, making some comments about Alan Gingell, was simply absurd. No mention of the fact that Alan, who happens to be a good friend of mine, but no mention of the fact that he's one of Australia's leading foreign policy thinkers, no mention of the fact that he's written several books on the subject, no mention of the fact that he was head of the Office of National Assessment, and, uh, and no mention of the fact that he succeeded Kim Beasley and is today president of the Australian Institute of International Affairs. Instead, they go after him on the grounds that he's the director of the China, China Matters, which is in fact a good think tank, but they want to imply that anyone involved with China Matters is pursuing a Beijing agenda. It's simply absurd. The debate is more important than that. It's a very important debate, and there's some very, very strong comments there. So I just want to draw you back to where we started, and that is, of course, in many respects, what you were saying about this backbench group is obvious. Uh, they are speaking much more stridently and robustly about the China relationship than the government is, uh, than the official foreign policy is. Uh, uh, a government, unsurprisingly, acts diplomatically and doesn't call out China, for instance, doesn't name China when it's talking about these cyber attacks. Sometimes that difference in approach between a backbench group and, and official policy can be beneficial in foreign policy. Sometimes it can do great damage. Where do you think uh, we are at the moment? Look, uh, Chris, I don't have any issue, and indeed it's not, it would be absurd for an unelected person to criticise an elected official for actually speaking out publicly. That is what they should do. That is good. However, for one group to continually wrap themselves in the flag and want to imply that those who disagree with them are not loyal Australians is simply crossing a line. That's unacceptable and they should be called out for that. 